Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and uh, oh, sorry about being overexposed. Hang on, let me just adjust that. There we go. Okay, so in a way, I actually wasn't overexposed, at least relative to the color space I'm being recorded in. The problem is the color space that you're watching me in can't register these really high luminance values, so it looks like I'm being overexposed. Don't worry, it relates to what we're talking about today. With the iPhone 12, high dynamic range, and Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is a big new feature on the already very popular iPhone camera, so the iPhone 12 is just taking it to the next level. There's lots of questions going around and people are talking about it. So today, I'd like to help answer those questions. In short, Dolby Vision is an HDR standard and it helps your video just look better. It helps it look better, more realistic with brighter pixels. And that's kind of the quick and dry version of the explanation. And for most people, that's probably all they need to know. But hey, I know why you're here. You're curious, right? You wanna know more than that. So here's the stuff we're gonna be talking about today. What is dynamic range and what are nits? What is Rec. 709 color space? What actually is high dynamic range? And how is it useful? What is 10-bit color versus 8-bit color? What is Dolby Vision? How do I film Dolby Vision and HDR on my iPhone? And how do I watch the high dynamic range footage? So what is dynamic range? Well, all of your photos and videos have some sort of dynamic range. The dynamic range of a photo or video is the range in brightness from the darkest pixels to the brightest pixels. What are we using to measure this brightness? Well, generally, phone displays, TVs, computer monitors, etc. The brightness of those things is measured in nits, or CDM2, which is candelas per square meter. A nit is approximately the amount of light that a candle emits in a square meter surface. So 50 candles is 50 nits, approximately, give or take. In a real world application, an iPhone 12 has a 1200 nit display, a 2020 iMac has 500 nits, so on and so forth. But here's the problem. Most video is encoded with a standard that doesn't understand anything more than 100 nits. So even if you have a crazy expensive, beautiful TV, and you're watching that limited video in that limited color space, well, you're not gonna get the benefits of that high dynamic range experience. This color space is part of Rec. 709. Rec. 709 is a series of recommendations assembled by the International Telecommunications Union. It dates back to the 90s, and back then people were not prioritizing higher brightness video. This explains what happened to me at the beginning of this episode. I was filming with much more brightness information that couldn't be displayed in Rec. 709, causing my highlights to clip and appear as solid white. But the world is moving forward, and Rec. 2020 and 2100 have specifications for high dynamic range. Okay, so now we'll dive into that some more, but let me just clear up some confusion because it even confused me at one time. When I'm talking about high dynamic range, or HDR, in this context, I'm not talking about those photos you see where there's multiple exposures combined together. Generally speaking, that's referred to as photographic HDR or HDRI. In this context that we're talking about today, we're not talking about multiple exposures, we're just talking about a single exposure that is capable of showing higher luminance values. So instead of being limited by that 100 nit limit, generally HDR video is 1000 plus nits. So why is that useful? Well, it's brighter, right? Especially when you compare it to standard dynamic range video, it's so much brighter. Okay, it's brighter, great. What exactly does that mean? Let's take a look at this example. The shot is exposure balance for the sky, so we can see all the detail no problem. But the shadows are now crushed so bad they're nearing a big black splotch. So to get those shadows brighter, let's just turn up the exposure, right? Well, just like we talked about earlier, now that we brighten up those shadows, the sky is now way too bright and it's blowing out. But that's at the 100 nit limit. Imagine this is an HDR video on an HDR display. I can increase the exposure, bringing out the details in the shadows, but the sky details are preserved and everything looks great. This is a big benefit that HDR video accomplishes. But now we run into another problem, color limitations. So most videos that you watch are encoded in 8-bit color which allocates 256 luminance values per color channel, red, green, and blue. Combined together, that's not enough to give HDR the wiggle room it needs to create the pretty pictures you see. So that's why HDR standards use 10-bit color, and in some cases, 12-bit color. 10-bit color offers 1,024 luminance values per channel. And when you multiply all that together, that gives high dynamic range video enough wiggle room to be able to make the pretty pictures you see and preserve all of the brightness and show all those colors. So we know what HDR is, how it works, why it's useful, and we know about 10-bit color. Perfect. So where does Dolby Vision come into play? 
Well, Dolby Vision, in short, is an HDR standard. There's actually a bunch of standards for HDR, which is one reason why it's so freaking complicated. But that aside, Dolby Vision is a proprietary format by Dolby Laboratories, and it offers one big benefit that many other standards don't have. It's more dynamic. In a way, it's kind of like dynamic high dynamic range. Typically, an HDR video has a constant set of instructions, or static metadata, that tell the display how it should present the video. This set of instructions applies to the whole video, and the instructions don't change throughout the duration of the video program. However, there are cases where certain attributes of HDR may need to be tailored for specific scenes. That's where Dolby Vision comes in. Dolby Vision provides additional instructions, dynamic metadata, that work alongside the video playback. And these additional instructions help adjust the picture for different scenes. Brightness and contrast, for example. Dolby Vision breaks down the metadata into eight levels. These levels have different parameters, which can be adjusted on a scene-by-scene, -scene, or even a frame-by-frame -frame basis, to truly leverage the capabilities of the HDR display, and make the picture look stunning. So at this time, if you're using an iPhone 12, you can film Dolby Vision video. The phone applies the color adjustments and other metadata automagically. Normally, this is done by professionals with specialized equipment, but in this case, the iPhone does it for you with the power of the A14 Bionic chip. Now remember, although this footage can look really good, it's still happening automatically with a computer. We're trying to replace a human's job and a human's attention to detail. So it may not always be perfect, but it will get better with time and with software updates. So there's some exciting stuff coming. This Dolby Vision mode is on by default, but you can toggle it off in the settings. So here's where things kind of become a pain in the butt. How do you watch this amazing footage? Well, to keep it simple, if you shoot with the built-in camera app on an iPhone 12, you can easily watch that stuff in the built-in photos app on an iPhone 12 and some other models, no problem. The compatibility is there and it's all built in. But let's expand on that. The reason why this is a little more complicated is because it's not like when we went from HD to 4K. For the most part, we were just cramming more pixels into screens and of videos, and the numbers were solid, and it was pretty easy to keep the standards simple, you know. But in this case, we have different HDR standards competing, and there's a lot of factors to consider. Different hardware and software solutions are going to play back HDR footage differently, and it's just a little bit complicated. But back to that question, how do you watch it? Well, you need two key components. First, you need a display which has the physical capabilities to display brighter pixels. You don't necessarily need an HDR display, but anything that can display more than that 100 nit brightness level will give you some benefits in most cases. And two, your playback software needs to be able to read the HDR transfer function and, if necessary, the additional HDR metadata. For example, my iPhone 12 Pro can shoot and view HDR footage, no problem, but if I upload the clip to Twitter, it will display in standard dynamic range, simply because Twitter's media player is not equipped to handle HDR footage, yet. And I'm not 100% sure what the Twitter app is doing behind the scenes, but I'm guessing it's using some sort of H.264 preset, which conforms the video into SDR and maximizes backward compatibility. However, with time, more apps, social media platforms, and everything will integrate HDR support, so we'll see that more going forward. The same goes for editing. Right now, on the iPhone, if you shoot the Dolby Vision, you can edit that stuff in iMovie on your iPhone or in the Photos app, but you can't truly edit it in many other places than that. Final Cut Pro, Apple's Pro software on the Mac, is gaining support for it soon, but it's not here just yet. Here's another example. iPhone 12 Pro HDR footage will play properly in QuickTime and in the Photos app, and the software will do its best to tone map the video to the display's abilities. If you look closely, you'll actually see the adjustments happening. But if I open the file in VLC, for example, the video plays really dark. I'm not 100% sure why these particular issues happen yet, but I'm guessing it's because iPhone 12 Dolby Vision footage simply doesn't work in everything yet. This is a relatively new thing. And I'm guessing VLC won't support Dolby Vision anytime soon because it's not an open format. But that's just a guess. If you know anything else about these compatibility issues, feel free to let me know in the comments. Check out the links in the description because I do have some other resources down there, and the one I really recommend is the Dolby Institute link because that gives you a really good breakdown as to how Dolby Vision works behind the scenes. So, I hope you learned something today. I know that was kind of a lot. Trust me, it confused me at first too when I was learning about it. So, no worries. Feel free to rewatch the episode if you need to relearn some things and get it under your belt. But also, if you have any questions, hey, I'm all ears. Leave something in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. And hey, if you want to see more cool camera stuff in action with the iPhone 12 versus the iPhone 11 Pro, 
Check out my camera comparison episode because that is really good too. And if you'd like to help fund the future of the Computer Clan, plus get some awesome perks along the way, feel free to pledge to our Patreon. Thank you very much for your support. And if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Bye.